men are sinful people. cleanses, and it's only him who can do this. He requires us to confess and forsake our sins when we come to him, but he receives us just as we are. The younger son thought that he could go to his father, confess his sins, and he will be accepted as a servant. But as we read, his father receives him back as a son. When we come to Christ, loved ones, we are welcomed as a child of God, a son, a daughter. Will you come to him? Have you truly repented of your sin? We have seen a rebellious son a repentant son, and now we see, thirdly and finally, a returning son in the second half of verse 20 to 24. The scene now changes and the father who hasn't featured since the beginning is brought back into the parable. The focus switches to him. Look at verse 20 with me. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. Powerful. It's powerful. The son who had disgraced the family lived a reckless life and abandoned his duty to care for his parents is greeted by his father running to him, which was an undignified action for a father in that culture. The father doesn't react in anger, and he doesn't reject his runaway son. Instead, when he sees him, what we told, he is filled with compassion. Despite the absolute state of the lad, the shriveled hair, the dirty skin and clothes, the smell of pigs and the body odour, the weight loss from the lack of food and the tired face from the lack of sleep, his father embraces him and kisses him. An expression of his welcome and forgiveness even before his son could utter the rehearsed apology. His father loved him and welcomed him back while he was still dirty. While his whole body was ruined by what he had done. That is the love of the father. The prodigal son starts his speech of forgiveness. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. What he says is absolutely correct. He has sinned against his father and God and is not worthy to be called his son. But his father cuts him off and gives him instructions to his servants in verse 22. Read it with me. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. The father is immediately making him his son again. The best robe is put on him. A ring is put on his finger. Symbols of sonship. And the sandals are put on his feet. And that is also another emblem of sonship. Slaves and servants never wore those, only sons. The fatted calf is ordered to be slaughtered and cooked to have a big 
celebration. Not just for the family, but for the whole village. The younger son's intention to be a slave is now dead in the water. The father gives an unexpected and undeserved public welcome. A great celebration commences with the smell of the fine food cooking. The people starting to congregate, the sound of music playing and the dancing. Why? The father's declaration in verse 24. For this is my son who was dead and is alive again. For he was lost and is found. The younger son's request for his inheritance wished that his father was dead. But in reality, he was the one dead when he had left and ended up in the pig pen. Everything is forgotten in the joy of that restoration. It is resurrection day on that farm. There is renewal and reconciliation. So they begin to celebrate. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is teaching his hearers and us loved ones of the great welcome that God gives to those who come to him in repentance. Those who once lived a life of selfish rebellion. They are welcomed into the love and mercy of God and the joy of the kingdom. They are welcomed and greeted with this celebration by the angels in heaven, we are told elsewhere. At the moment of conversion, a person receives all that they need. At that moment of conversion, what does God do for us? He freely pardons us from all our sins. As far as the Easter's from the West, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. The Father in the parable does not even mention any of the sins his Son has done. He is silent on them all. His silence speaks volumes. When we come to God in repentance... He forgives and freely pardons you. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon man, woman, boy and girl, in that moment of being abundantly pardoned, he will become clean, clean as freshly fallen snow. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. They are red as crimson, they shall be like wool, says the Lord. Brothers and sisters, our sins are blotted out, wiped erased. God says, I remember your sins no more. The younger son wants to become a servant, but he is made a son. We are made sons and daughters of God when we become a Christian. The Apostle Paul writes, now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. As as the hymn goes, brothers and sisters, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. He joins us to his son, Jesus Christ, and we are the one in and we are one in him forever. We are met with a complete and free pardon. Brother and sister, what a heavenly father we have. All praise to him who has saved us, kept us and has made us alive in Christ. But friends, if you are not a Christian, 
we see that the younger son made a decision when he came to his senses. I will set out and go back to my father. And he got up and went to his father. He made a choice. All Christians have made a decision at some point to go to God and cast themselves upon the mercy of God. Jesus is teaching you this afternoon and I am urging you, precious loved one, to go to God today. God is slow to anger and abounding in love. Go to God for mercy. Go to him for the cleansing of your son, of your sin. Go to him so that he can wash you in the blood of his righteous son, Jesus Christ. Go to God for he has paid the penalty of your sin in his son. Go to him today and he will give you that robe of righteousness of his son. Come to him now. And he will welcome you into his kingdom. His arms of mercy, love, peace and forgiveness are open to you. Will you come to him? Amen.